Tony in the building. What's going on with you, my G? Man, chilling out here in Tennessee, man. All right, man. Now, you say you're chilling in Tennessee, but your your phone is listing you in Texas. So are are you from Tennessee or are you from Texas? I'm from Houston, Texas. Oh, that's what's up. And Houston, Texas is where I reside. That's yeah. what's up. How, born and raised? Yes, sir. Born and raised. Born and raised. Out. So what's up, man? You 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 down in there with the home of the screw? You hip to uh to the screw yes, scene down there. <laughs> yes, sir. DJ Screw, Lil Key Key Fat Pat. Oh, Everybody. Oh Big my god. Oh my god, you you mentioning the legends, my G. Mm-hmm. Uh uh. What about yes, sir. so you so you know I'm I'm like I said, I, I, I am a bit screw fan. I when I had my when I, when I had my store back in the day, I you know I the, the, everybody called me the home of the chopped and screwed up in Cleveland when Screw came to town. So yeah. so I you know I was down with everybody. I was down with T Town music, uh, yeah. Slim Thug, Swisher House, yeah. Swisher House, Paid in Full, all them boys yeah. out there, man. So that's that's what's up. Is is it is screw still being down there or what? Yes, it is. It's still it's still part, very much part of the culture. Oh, okay, okay. So you know, they they still, still they ate it there. They, they still, still doing it. They still sipping on some scissor down there. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, Tony, man. Mm-hmm. Let's start. Let's start with your story, man. I want to. I want to hear. I want to hear how you got started in trucking and how has it been so far and what you and what you used to do before trucking. Well, I'm a uh, I'm a U.S. Navy veteran. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, before uh, jumping into transportation, uh, did ten years in the military. Uh, I was a sonar tech. I looked for enemy submarines. That was my job. Mm. I traveled all over the world. I got out. And I started working in uh, energy, oil, and gas chemical plants. So I worked for the power company uh, in Houston. Uh, worked some chemical plant jobs, some oil, oil plant jobs. Mm-hmm. And then um, I came across a JT, uh, JT Hustle video on YouTube mm-hmm. about uh, courier work. And that sparked my interest. He mentioned expediting. And I do the cargo van, sprinter van part. And that's, that piqued my interest. And I started researching more stuff and more and more and more. And uh, I jumped off the porch, man, and bought me a van and got in the hall of freight. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. So uh, let's let's go with your career in the military. You say you uh you spent ten years. Why why you didn't finish? Man, I knew I, I knew something else was meant for me. I know my uh, my stay <laughs> I had overstayed my my, uh, my time there. I knew I was bigger than the military. <laughs> you say you overstayed your welcome, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, so. Yep. So in the military, man. So you 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 went in the military straight out of school, or or it was a little bit of time out of high school. Straight out of high school. Straight out of high school. Eighteen years old. All right. So back. So so back when you went, uh, how how long ago was that? Nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. Man, what was some what was some of the challenges for you? You know, back in ninety eight, getting into the military. To see, uh, you know, everybody, you know, kind of hate being away from home mm-hmm. and just adapting to new things, learning new things, learning new people. Because mm-hmm. you got people coming from all over the country. Some people have never seen anybody in, of any other color, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, different climates, all kind of things like that. Uh, and being exposed to uh, traveling and all kind of stuff like that. A lot of people, before they go into it, they never left their neighborhood. Right. We get a chance to see different different cultures, different way of life, different traditions. Did that you that kind of stuff? Did now you went in the nineteen ninety eight. Mm-hmm. Was you was you still in there mm-hmm. during the during the Iraq war uh era? Yes, when Iraqi freedom, when I Iraqi freedom began, yes, I was I was I was in the military, but I was stationed down in Texas during that time. Oh, okay, okay. Did you see did did you see any action? Mm-hmm. Did did uh did did you see any action? Because you did say you you was uh you was looking for you know uh enemy enemy submarines yeah <laughs> yeah now nah, they don't yeah like ain't no, ain't no submarines in the desert but uh I was in uh Japan and uh on the seventh fleet 
and we look for uh, we look for enemy submarine. We take we take that water way over there. Okay, okay, that's what's up. Take man. a couple submarines. Never got, never got. No boat. We had to we had to take some submarines a couple times. So you decide. So you decided to uh, to just come up out of out out of there after your ten. Yeah. Are you still, yeah. now being that you're a veteran and thank you for your service, man. I I do appreciate it. Um, of course, you you know got the the military health plan and all like that. But do you still get any? You still get any type of residual from the military, or just the health plan? Uh -huh. Uh, yes, I yes I do. I'm a mm -hmm. I, I'm a veteran. Uh, and yes, I do receive uh, some medical and stuff like that from the military. Okay, okay. So, so you bounced up off the military. What was next for you? Uh, you know, you say you went into uh in in the chemical work down there. How what was what was the challenges of working around chemicals and stuff like that? Just, just the dangers, you know what I'm saying? Just the dangers and also just, you know, being exposed to different chemicals, mm -hmm. making sure that you can, you can, you can do your part and be safe, but the other person next to you has to be safe also. They can do something that can affect everybody. Right. They can cause an explosion or a fire. So you can do your part, but this person over here in this area can still do something that affects everybody or leave something for the next person that can endanger his life. Now, getting into chem so that was one. No, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What you were saying? I said, no, nah, that was one big thing because there was some, there was some explosion and stuff doing it. Not in my facility, but around the facility. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, now jumping into, jumping into chemicals and stuff like that. Uh, of course that comes with, uh, with a financial jump. Uh, would, would, mm -hmm. you, would you agree, uh, working in, working in that area, the, the finance, the, the finance down there is a lot higher than, than, than normal. That's why you jumped into yes. it. Yes, uh, good paying, good paying field. It's, uh, it's one of the fields where you can have a high school diploma and make six figures. Mm. Say that again. The chemical you industry. You have a high school diploma. Yeah, energy, oil, and gas, chemical. You have a high school diploma, or some, or maybe a, an associate's degree, mm -hmm. or some certification training, and make six figures. Wow. Is it still a demand for 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 people oh, down there? Yeah. It's still a demand for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, yeah. bro, all if, time. Bro, if that was a six figure job, why why you didn't uh why you didn't stay to retire? Because I wasn't happy, man. I was uh, I wasn't ha I wasn't happy, and then just the dangers. Oh, okay. The dangers of it, you know. Like I say, somebody else do something, and they could blow something up to kill everybody, wow. or, or you know. Endanger everybody's lives. You know, there's a lot of close calls. Sometimes there was, you know, leaks. A lot of this stuff moves at high, rate, high, high rates of speed. Mm -hmm. Was it under high, high pressures or high temperatures? You know? All right. it's, it's very taxing on the body. It's very taxing on the body. So I was like, man, I've, uh, I've had enough. Let's move on. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right. So shout out to uh, Sheree Moore. You know, she trucking. Shout out to the she trucking. Uh, referred me to get in contact with you and chop it up with you, so I appreciate her for that. Uh, mm -hmm. You do you you do music, right? Yes, sir. I do music. Oh, okay. I've been doing it for a while since I was a kid. I have a twin brother, and we used, we used to be a group called uh, Double Trouble, mm -hmm. DT. And so uh, when I got into the transportation, uh, I heard the beat, because I still listen to beats. I still do stuff from time to time. So I heard this beat. And the lyrics that came to my head, the first one I came up with was money in the van. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people say in the cargo van business, they say that's my money. But you can make a good living. You can make six figures in the cargo van. Mm. So I made a song talking about day-to-day -day life, going through tra transportation in the cargo van. I heard the beat, the lyrics came to me. Okay. So you ain't going to do nothing with it, so put it in my hand. I had a vision in my dream, and then I put it in my plan. I took a couple grand, and then I put it in the van. We were away from state to state. That's how your boy became the man. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So you, so did, how long, how long your interest, uh, how long your interest was in music for? And did you, did you, 
did you get a chance to follow through? You you get put on with anybody or 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 what's up? Let's see, I, man, I found a couple found a couple record deals back in the day with some you know some janky uh, love janky record companies record companies had some songs played on the radio the local radio station ninety seven point nine in box in Houston. Mm -hmm. Then put out mixtape and uh. But doing being in the middle, I was doing all was in the military too. So I'm traveling, going across the world. It was kind of hard to keep up with it. And uh, I had some group members too that sometimes they got they got put behind bars during certain times, so it was hard to do the group thing. Okay, okay, okay. So you say you you signed some uh some some fucked up record deals back in the day, and that's you know <laughs> back, back back in the day is is you know like you know listening to some of these old school artists and that that's why I particular uh gravitate towards you know Rakim mm -hmm. uh Eric B uh KRS yeah. one Big Daddy Kane you know what I'm saying the Juice yeah. crew the original the original heart of hip hop which is which was up in New York that, that nowadays man what do you what do you what do you think of these mumble mouth rappers nowadays man I feel like uh, you know the the, the, the trends change. That's what the that's what the youngsters are in. But they are some they are some good ones that don't mumble. Mm -hmm. You know you can hear what they're saying. So they is some, some of the music. You know I, it's good. It's good for party. It gets you hype. It's good for working out. It gets your energy going. Mm -hmm. You know, but I feel like there was more substance in the music in the past. There was more of a message. Uh, also, too, there was also that back in the day there was always the clean version. Along with the explicit version, exactly. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays we just get the explicit version, and that's it. And then it's up to the DJ. That's what they put on radio. It's up to the DJs to beep out the the the, the words and everything. Yeah, man. I, yeah, so I like man. I like some of the new music. I listen. I listen to the young guys, little baby, you know, huh? little dirt. Mm -hmm. How do you how how do you feel about how how do you feel about these recent deaths of these uh of these uh rappers, man? Young Dolph, it's uh it's 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 a couple of guys in Chicago. Uh, I think it was another uh another rapper uh that was that was just recently killed within the last couple of years, man. Uh, yeah. Was was yeah, all of yeah all of pop them. smoke. What what do you how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, him. I, I feel it. I feel it's really stupid, man. It's like, uh, <clears throat> okay. Well, once you know, another thing too. Our music is you turn on the radio. Our music is the only music that's for promoting uh, violence against each other. Yeah, uh, selling the drugs, prostitution, uh, uh, um, being unladylike. You know what I'm saying? Uh, things that go against our family values and tradition. You know what I'm saying? Get more. So you turn on any other station, you don't hear that. No. There's some our station. So when these killings, these killings, they're ridiculous. You got people that are providing for their family. They're a bright light in the community. They're, they're creating jobs. You know, you want to take somebody out that's done something with themselves. Why don't you just look at their grind and look at their work ethic and put it and put it in your life? You know, it's a lot of people that want to hate, but we still a lot of us have the same opportunities. We just don't do nothing with them. So a lot of these killing is simply, you, you know, they well, XXX, he went to the bank, they got $20,000 to go buy a motorcycle, they called him at the light, and they killed him for a month. For nothing. He made $20,000 at McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, it's a, work, a life is worth more than that. So you're not going to get a chance to spend the money. You know? So they killed off in a cookie store. In a, it, it, mm. You know, you know, one of you know we was we was talking about that behind the scenes and um and it's it's sad that that shit is is happening and they mm -hmm. asked me what was you know what was my my feelings on it and i i was telling them i was saying look man the the hood is taking them out the hood is taking mm -hmm. them out. they go back they 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 go back to the hood and and the hood is taking them out, you know, because we got 
Mm-hmm. We, we, we got all the people that turn around like, oh, well, they left the hood and they don't show no hood, no love. And, you know, they just mm-hmm. left the hood behind and this, that, and the third. But when they come back, yeah. when they come back to the hood and, 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 and show love at a fucking cookie store, some somebody some somebody in their feelings or some somebody feeling some kind of way go up and take the man out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with my dude up in um up in uh Los Angeles, man. Uh, uh what's that yeah, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hustle. My cousin, my cousin, yeah. my cousin met him. You know, they they did a picture with each other. And yeah. the, the man you know, in the hood, you know, he brought the brought the plaza, brought the plaza up from 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 mm-hmm. being shut down to one of the most profitable uh, plazas in the area doing, you know, doing giveaways and all this other shit. And and somebody and went community up there. center, yeah. is coding, everything. Yeah. Giving somebody, job, creating jobs for a community. Right. And somebody went up there and just killed him for what? For what, man? Hatred and jealousy. And everybody over here talking about, yeah. well, you know, they don't give back to the hood. They don't do this to the hood. And, and the hood is this. And the hood's supposed to be hard. Well, I tell you what. You know, I'm all about, you know, it, and this coming up from 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 the, the ground. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to be famous. Just give me the money. <laughs> 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 Just give me the yeah. money. You know, if I, the thing, yeah. Yeah, if I hit the lottery, I, I don't want to go. No, nah, just give me my money. Oh, but we got to take a picture. No, you don't. No, nah, I'm, I'm not going to yeah. say no. Nah, I'm not going to take no picture with a big ass with a, with a big ass check in my hand. No, nah, you can just send that to me. Just give me my money. That's about it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. when people. When it, 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 it just amazes me, too, brother, that, uh, that they'll take out somebody positive out of the community. We got all these things affecting our community, you know, with police brutality, racism, all kind of things. But when these things happen, they don't take any action toward those toward that, those communities or those people mm-hmm. that target us. But they take action on somebody that's positive in the community that looks like us. Mm-hmm. You know? It doesn't make any sense. It's a damn shame, man. So... It's, it's, it's those things more life court than court than going to get somebody's tang back. You got so many other issues, but you see, I mean, I got the chain, I got the chain, but we got more important things going on. Exactly. So, you know, as, as I said before, and as you said, you know, the the, the contracts that, that, that you signed off. So it is true mm-hmm. from what the old schoolers are talking about because they, you know, they, they, they given, now they given the real because, you know, uh, what's that kid's name? Flavor Flav. He he was just in the interview and talked about the real fucked up uh contract that he signed. He signed the contract. He said, Wonder why you don't hear no music from me now because of the contract that it's signed. And he didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. That that was embedded into the contract. So is it true mm-hmm. that the that the record I mean it is true that the record game is is just about as ruthless as the as the trucking industry, right? Yeah, yeah. It's some dirty people. They want to capitalize off your talent. They don't have the talent, but they see the value in it, so they want to capitalize off it and control it. They control it forever. So, like I said before, man, it is. It's just true. Is it? You know, people better listen. <laughs> you know that 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 when the artist said that the artist is broke, even though they they did millions and millions of records and all like that, and when they say they broke. Yeah. Better believe it. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. All right. So you jumped into the uh you, you jumped into the trucking industry by way of uh Splinter Van. Did you did you get your did did yeah, you go yeah. did you go and get your uh CDL or you just uh just went on here and brought the van and just jumped right into it? Yeah, I brought the van and jumped right into it. The uh, cargo van, Splinter Van is the one way you can get into the you know, transportation uh field. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the quickest ways without a CDL. It doesn't require you to have one. But if you want uh, to have like better chances of getting freight, you do need like endorsements like hazmat or that helps you out. That makes you a unique, you, you provide a unique service when you, when you can have a hazmat mm-hmm. or your Twit card. 
Now let me add let me ask you this because this you know I never bothered to ask anybody this because I guess you know getting your hazmat and your and your tankers and all like that is just automatic when you get a CDL but can you have that on your regular license or do you need a CDL to get those endorsements Yes you need a CDL to get those endorsements Okay all right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so uh, you you got the Splinter Van. Uh, how, how long have you? Uh, how long ago you decided to to do the Splinter Van, and what what was some of the research that you did to to to, to do what you're doing now? All right, I've been in the Splinter Van for a year now. Uh, I researched from YouTube and Google, man. Uh, JT Hustle, mm -hmm. JT Hustle put out a lot of good information. It was another guy by the name of uh, Everything Apex, Zumaletta, uh, and they put out good information. They uh, pointed me in the right direction. I researched, uh, I made phone calls, I tapped in with uh, Sheldon, the boss truck coach, tapped in with a lot of people, man, and, and jumped off the porch, got my van, got my MC, got the rolling. So, T Swan, why, why didn't you pay for it, bruh? There's a lot of there's a lot of people out here that's charging big money for for the information that you that 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 you could that you found yourself. Why you just didn't do the shortcut and pay for all of that? They wouldn't. They hadn't been in transportation that long. They had jumped into it, and I said they could figure it out. I could figure it out myself mm -hmm. because a lot of the courses they were, they were pretty pricey, and I was like, <laughs> you can just make a phone call or. You can look, call it, you can call the organization yourself and they'll walk you through whatever you need to do. So I researched, researched, and we're finding out the real cost of some things. And I just did it myself. That's what's up, man. I, I, I applaud you for that, man. I mean, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of gurus out here that's charging big money for the same information that you could, that, that you could just take a little bit more yeah. extra time and find it. What do you now in, in no, you know, no disrespect, no, no disrespect, no shots fired, you know, like that. Get your hustle okay. on. That, that's that's what it is. Get your hustle on. You good. Exactly. But uh, why? Why? You know, what, what's your thoughts on 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 so-called Internet gurus that that try to that that try to hustle, you know, try to hustle impressionable people? into into something that might not work in their favor uh, i'm not I, I don't really rock with them uh there are some people that they have the experience and they real with it they have the experience and they they know everything in their field mm -hmm. because they put in the work they put in the time and then there's some that just sell in the course and people are the same way they're in the same position that they would after they get the course not knowing anything not being pointed in the right direction not getting any not, not getting any real knowledge to help them have to make or make some money you know because uh, there's a lot of people they take courses and they and then they took courses and then they call me and then we just talk regular conversation i'll be like oh you didn't know this you didn't know that they were like well i took this course courses didn't teach me that but you you were teaching me you know and it, i don't put it in i don't put it in the practice and now i'm making money So, but if you can make money sitting behind the sitting behind the desk and get and get paid in sleep, more power to you. Yeah. So Splinter Brand, bro. Uh, wow. So you so so you doing the damn thing. You 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 just are are you like how how you rocking it down there? Are you do you, you just do local or you just go all over or or how, um, how do you rock out to make your money? Man, I go all over. I like to see, I like seeing the road. Uh, my military career with all the traveling, I like traveling. So, you know, I, go, I go out of state. Of course, I'm from Texas. You can thrive just in Texas. But I, I want to go see everything. So, man, I might be on the West Coast. I might be up north. I might be down south. I might be chilling in Miami. You know, I like to go and see. And all, I'm doing over the road. And all this from a splinter van. Yeah. Yeah, because you can park, you can park a spinner van anywhere. You got enough space in it. I call it my sanctuary, my hotel, and my business. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I can park it anywhere. I ain't got to try to find this truck parking. I can park it anywhere. I can drive it anywhere. 
Man, what do you, what, what do you say about guys that's that's you know that's OTR drivers? You know that are, you know that are in 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 the trucking field feel about you guys taking some of their work. They let what before you answer that, be, before you answer that, they they feel they they feel that not only you guys but box truck guys as well is is making it is making it harder for them to get a good rate. That's what I mean. Wow. Let's see. Well, I'll put it like this. There's a lot of freight out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're not going to get everything. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that may not be for you what every time all. It may not be for you. It's a lot of guys that still don't even know. It's a lot of guys been in trucking business for a long time. They don't even know what a box truck to make or even know anything about Sprinter Van. Some of them still blind to it. Mm -hmm. I know people that's been trucking, they're they in their 60s, and they never seen anybody make money in the cargo van. They had no idea. They've been trucking 30 years, you know? Yeah, no idea, right? But there's available freight. There's, there's so much money in this business. We, I don't feel like we really hurt in their pocket because there's a whole lot of freight. And a lot of times, they ain't go to them first, and we get what's left over. Now it's just now it's just you in a sprinter van. You 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 don't have you 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 don't have uh you don't have no more in your in your in your repertoire, or do you have plans to get a to get a fleet? I plan. I'm planning to move up uh, and acquire a couple more vans, uh, maybe even a box truck, and uh, and grow it, man. And grow it. I don't plan to be behind the wheel. <laughs> I don't plan to be behind the wheel forever. Okay, that's yeah. what's up. That's what's up. What about uh? Now, how how do you acquire your uh? How how do you acquire your freight? Like uh, what what you do first? Give give me a day. Give me a day in the life of a, a, a of T Swan in a Splinter in a in a Splinter van. All right. So what T Swan does? I wake up. Uh, I check my email because I have loads that come in through email. Mm -hmm. uh, I turn. I got a couple of assets off my GPS location, mm -hmm. and they populate loads that way. And I got a couple of companies that I, I haul for down the time. I will call them and tell them that I'm available, give them my location, and they'll call me with loads. And then also I hit I hit a BAT truck stop low boards. I look at low boards to see uh, if they got anything for me that's going to where I want to go. And see, I call. I got a couple of brokers. I call them. I tell them where I'm at too and see if they got anything in the area for me. And that's how that's how I get my freight. I got about seven, eight different options. Okay, that's what. Do, what do you do like if you get like a long freight? Let's say you you pick one up from from texas and then you know you're going up into the midwest or the northeast uh you you just like how many do you get like multiple loads or you just get one load yeah i've almost now i've had multiple loads before this is better um so i might let's say i get one pallet and it's going up to the midwest well on that route i'll find something else coming up that way going in the same direction because i got room for two more pallets in my van so I either put uh, two more pallets in from another load or I have two more other loads on that going the same direction. And, and map them out to where they, they're not conflicting the schedule. And make money, get three get three deposits off of one trip, you know? Now you get, now, of course, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in the industry where I get paid by the mile. But, but you getting the three loads, you, you getting paid by the loads. Right. By the low and by the mile, it varies. Oh, you oh you work that in too. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. that's what's yeah. Happening. But you know, in my time, the Sprinter vans, the cargo vans, the expedited freight is something last minute. Mm -hmm. It's something that's got to be there. So yeah, so sometimes you you can make really really good money. Now, when you when you got to do your you know when you got to do your ten, or let me ask you this: Are you are you a bly? Are you a buy by the uh by the ELD or no? No, nah, we don't have to do ELD. We don't have drive time restrictions, uh, and we don't have to stop the weight scale. Uh, so you can go no weight scale, no drive time restrictions, no ELD. Uh, you 
just go ahead grab three loaves and yo, I have it to you in, in first thing in the morning. You can just overnight, man. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm afraid of you, bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. So do you? That's one advantage we do have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So do you? So when you when when it's time to sleep. You you sleep in your van or you just go ahead and get yourself a hotel for the night? No, I sleep in the van. Save. The van got more than enough space. You said save all that money. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, my G. I hear you. All right, man. So for anybody that's interested in getting into, you know, getting into this, because you know, not by way of the gurus, what do you suggest? Uh, suggest uh, people do if they if if, if they want to start you know a splinter brand, I mean a splinter splinter van, uh, as to by expedited in the transportation. Do you suggest them? Uh, what what? Let me rephrase this. What's what type of vehicle that you suggest? Uh, what type of routes they should they should look into, and uh, and if anything else, who to be. And who to look at to get their inspiration? I would say um, if you plan on getting in this field, I would talk to somebody that's already in it. If you can, if you have like face to face or uh, in person contact with somebody, I would you know ask them like how do they do their how do they do their routes, how do they sleep, what do they do, what do they drive with somebody. Hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Now you, you now you mentioning you know talking to somebody that's in the industry. But what is mm-hmm. it? But what if it's hard to talk to that person? What if, what if you get with that person? Get with a person that you see that you want to get that information from, and they just want to they they just want to give you the side eye. Would you, how do you dis, how how do you let a person know to not to get discouraged from that? Don't get don't don't get discouraged. Uh, there's always gonna be there's always gonna be some people that you don't you don't get married. It's gonna be whether you're working to nine to five or anywhere in the world. You're gonna come across people with bad attitudes. But are you gonna let them stop you from what you're trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So just move to the next person. And a lot of times it's these these pilots flying J's, these truck stops, you'll see cargo vans. You know, pull up. You know, introduce yourself, talk, ask questions. You know? Right. Uh and and band wise. Let's see, you got the Mercedes Sprinter, you got the Ford Transit, you got the Dodge Pro Master, mm. uh, and you got the Nissan MV van. Uh, for me, the Sprinter, the, the Mercedes Sprinter is the largest one. It's the longest one. It can fit like four pallets or four skids. That's a nice van. But then, you, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a diesel. And then, uh, but you got to deal, deal with the death system, you know? Mm-hmm. And they can be pricey. And then it's a Mercedes. So the next one, in my opinion, is the Ford Transit. It's the next thing closer to the Mercedes Sprinter. And that's what I have. I have a Ford Transit. I have an F-250 uh, Transit extended high roof. I can fit three skids in it, and the dimensions are very close to that of a Mercedes Sprinter. You know, it's a Ford. It's a gas engine. Repairs are cheap. You know? Then you got the Dodge ProMaster. Uh, you can fit, it has different, it has different lengths and different heights. You got, you got the low roof, you got the mid roof, the high roof. You like a transit, you got the extended, and you got the regular. You can get you can get one that can fit two skids in it or one with three skids in it, but the Pro Master is the cheapest out of, out of the van. Okay. Uh, the Nissan van, the dimensions on it are, uh, are not really good the way it's designed, the way it's shaped. Uh, but you can make money in any van. As long as you got a van, you can make money. Whether you're hauling auto parts, uh, catering, moving, moving furniture, there's always there's always ways to make money in the van. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. That is what's up. Well, T. Swain, thank you very much for coming on, brother man, and uh, and giving me some insight on uh, on on splinter vans, box trucks, expedited man. That's, shit, that gave me a newfound revelation of what I might want to do in the coming years, bro. Um, how much? Yeah. How, how how much one of these? How much one of these vans starts at? What 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 they start at? And should I get a brand new or should start, I get a used one? Let's see. I don't like I don't like having pre existing problems, so I got brand new. And then a lot of things too, was like during COVID, a lot of people lost their jobs. You know, during the pandemic, a lot of people lost their jobs. 
uh, they didn't have jobs to go back to, so they had to start figuring out things. So people start jumping in transportation. You start seeing a lot of logistics companies pop up, you know? Mm-hmm. So these dealerships were recognizing that, so they were jacking the prices up on these used vans. So these used vans were the same prices as brand new. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to get this beat up old used van for thirty some thousand dollars when I can go buy this brand new one with a warranty, the maintenance plan for the same price. And all the new bells and whistles on it. So mm-hmm. I went new. Straight cash, bro, or you 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 went a finance route. I went the finance route. Okay, that's what's up. I went that's the finance up. route. That's what's up. What what are yeah, the but in the Splendor Van game? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I say in the Splendor Van game, it depends on your hustle. You can make sixty thousand dollars, or you can make one hundred twenty thousand mm. dollars. You know, but it's on you and your hustle. What what all the what all the permits that one needs uh, to start a splinter van business? You just need a regular regular driver's license. Same driver's license you desire your car pickup truck. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. That's uh, it. it n- nothing more, nothing less. I right? just just get that. Call somebody if they need something moved, and bam. Yo, have you have you um. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever seen the show called Shipping Wars on A and E? <laughs> now I don't watch TV too much. I'm too busy trying to get through it. Because there's, the, yeah. you know, I, I I see a couple of you know a couple of YouTubers. I think they're I, mm-hmm. from what I understand, they they gonna you know they're gonna be in season nine. I think it's the newest season mm-hmm. that's coming up with, but. You know, I, I I talked to a few people that was you know that did the behind the scenes with mm-hmm. with the shipping wars of the of the you know of the past, and you know mm-hmm. of course this is reality TV, so some of it is scripted and you know some of mm-hmm. it is kind of it's kind of you know not all that you know not all that truthful, but yeah. The, but there is there is a company called U Ship. Do you are, are you familiar yeah. with them and do you mess with them? No, I've heard of them, but no, I don't mess with them. Hmm. I've seen the advertisers uh, of their company, but no, I don't mess with them. What will be your what will be your objective opinion on them if you have one? I'm not really familiar with them. So no, I don't I don't really have too much information on them. I just seen them advertise they just all right, that's what's up. That's what's up. T Swain. So what are what are they doing in the what are they doing in the game that's causing conflict? Hold on, I'm I'm sorry. You asking me that? You asking me that question? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 producers, kind of, you know, like how the how how the how the guys look for you know uh, look for freight and all like that. They don't really do it. You know, the producers do it. You know what I'm saying? They just make it, yeah. you know, they just make it look look good on TV. But the producers are the ones that go out there to actually broker the freight for these guys. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of other stuff that was, you know, that was said. You know, it was, you know, a couple of guys. uh took you know took them to court as as with all of a and e's uh uh reality <laughs> shows program oh, yeah oh my god the the what the shipping wars the the uh the storage wars uh the mm-hmm. what was that to flip this house i mean it, yeah. I, I, out of all of the a and e popular shows all of them had something you know all of them was in court, you know, and it's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It is crazy. All right, my man, I got a few questions for you before we get on up out of here. I know you're a busy man, and I do appreciate it. Let's talk, let's, uh, let's talk something about the music, man, the transportation music. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Uh, why do you mm-hmm. why why do you think? Well, why do you think? Uh, drivers in the industry, and I'm, I'm just saying the industry. Uh, gets no respect, bruh. I guess because the people really don't know what they do. They the people don't really know how they sacrifice. You know how you going? How you away from your family? 
for weeks and months at a time. And how you on the road and, you know, you're putting your life in danger. Mm-hmm. You're hauling dangerous cargo. You know what I'm saying? You're going over da- in dangerous areas, dangerous terrain. They don't know everything that goes in and they don't, they don't know that everything that we do is affected by transportation. The food you eat, the medicine you get, the clothes on your back, the house that you live in, all that stuff got to you because it's on a truck somewhere. Mm-hmm. They don't. They don't know. And I feel that people know, if people knew and see what drivers go through and how they put their lives on the line and how they sacrifice their rest and, 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 their, and their family and stuff like that, they would have a better appreciation for them. Mm-hmm. I feel you on that. Have you, now, throughout your years of, of being employed, have you ever been fired? Mm-hmm. <laughs> have you ever been fired from a company, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah, one time. What 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 was that time? What, and and why? Let's see. Uh, I worked at a chemical plant, and uh, there was an incident that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, multiple people were involved in it, but they wanted to put the blame, put the whole thing on me. Okay. And then, uh, so then they let me go. But then they, uh, we had went to arbitration because the union filed a grievance, and then they, uh, they paid me all the money uh, that I missed out on if I'd have still been working there for a time period. Okay. They just settled out. Yeah. Okay. That and was... then they changed it to a resignation and gave me and gave me some money. That's what's <laughs> up, man. That's what's up. Okay. Uh, what if, what is what is one of the uh. M- what what is one of the biggest misconceptions in Splinter Van uh Splinter Van work, man? What's what is uh what's one of the misconceptions that you come that you come by in, in Splinter Van work? Then uh let's see that that uh we don't make no money or that you can't uh you, you know, you can't haul certain things or you can't you can't fit certain certain freight in there. Uh it's not possible to make six figures, uh, but you can't provide for yourself. You can't provide for your family. Right. And then, uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are saying that there ain't no money in that. And then you talk, I'm going to tell you this. There's some truckers. They drive for companies. They make 1500 a week, 1700 a week, $2,000 a week. Mm-hmm. And of vans, mm-hmm. it's easy to make $2,500, $3,000, a week. It depends on how you hustle. That's what's up. So, you, so hustle hard, and you'll you'll make that money. Uh, mm-hmm. Since you've been since you've been out, and you say you do it, and you have done a lot of traveling because of your military background. So, what are some of your yeah. favorite? What are what are some of your favorite sites or experiences you encountered while you you know in your travels? Man, just uh, just people in culture where people talk, uh, the different foods in the different parts of the country, uh, traditions and cultures, and like uh, you know, pretty much statewide, it's just like the different foods and the way people treat each other in different sites. Like when I put into a city, I try to go to the best restaurant or, or top ten restaurant, or I go catch a game. They got a sports team that I that I like, you know, and. Uh, and overseas, my travel overseas is just the way people treat life and how they how they how they approach it. You know, what's important to them, how they culture, like respect and stuff like that. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, T Swain. Hey, where where can people find uh, you? Still, if you're still doing music, where where people can find your music at, man? Oh hell yeah, man! Still doing music. Uh, uh, I. I pretty much just started a new genre, man. <laughs> Transportation music. <laughs> so I made a hell yeah, bro. So like I was, I was realizing, man, it wasn't nobody. It wasn't nothing for the drivers. So I made some music for the drivers. Whether you in a, a cargo van, you in a box truck, or you in a big rig, I got something for you, man. So you can find me on uh, all streaming platforms. T Swin. You find me on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, dot com slash T Swin. I got an EP that's available on Spotify, Apple, Apple Music, iTunes, everywhere. Uh, T Swin, Money in the Van. I got Money in the Van song. I got a song called Boston, where it talks about you know you quitting a job that you hate and you start you start working for yourself. I got a song that called uh, Make a Run, where it talks about a driver being on the road. He got a woman at home. He out there going to go make the living. He just want to hold everything down until he get back. And he's gonna reward her when he get back. Word. You know. 
And the new one we got is called this, uh, Dedicated Lane, featuring me uh, and Beyond uh, Expediter. So, all right, that's what's up. Man, check me right. out. Make sure you send me, you know, when, when we get off, man, make sure you send me all of the links so I can put it all in the uh, description, man. Uh, again, you are a citizen. I appreciate you. Shout out to Sheree Moore. Uh, uh, she trucking uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook group for bringing us together, mm -hmm. man. I really do appreciate it. I enjoyed myself, man. Great conversation. Good information. Uh, you, you, you opened my eyes a little bit on, uh, on, on the, on the bots, on the bots in the splinter van. You said, don't sleep on that. So I, I might nah. have to, I might have to take maybe maybe about a couple more years, save up the cheese, and probably uh, transition <laughs> over. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I might yep. have to do that, man. That's what's up, man. But T Swain, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. But you wanna be